A couple years ago, I made a video comparing VMware Player to VirtualBox, but it's 2024 now, so has anything changed? I'll get to the performance comparisons in a minute, but first, in November of 2023, Broadcom acquired VMware. One of the major changes to basic users is that VMware Workstation not just player is now free for personal use. Now, where do you get VMware Workstation from? As far as I'm aware, it's only available through Broadcom's wonderful support site. You first need to visit support.broadcom.com and unfortunately create an account. Once you're logged in with that account, click the software dropdown and select VMware Cloud Foundation, then My Downloads, and then scroll down to VMware Workstation Pro. Once you click VMware Workstation Pro, just make sure you choose the personal use download. Now, when you do install, you'll eventually be asked for a license. Just choose Use VMware Workstation 17 for personal use. And there you go. Workstation is great because it allows you to customize things that player just wouldn't allow. But I have to say, I'm not sold on the interface. It just seems bulky and clunky. As you can see, for basic use, everything's here, including the machine settings, just like you'd have in the basic player. The interface, coupled with the VMware drivers on the guest, is extremely snappy. Being able to resize a window and have the guest OS change its resolution on the fly is great. Copy and paste, as well as drag and drop, always seems to work in VMware, unlike VirtualBox. But here's something that drove me nuts. When you choose full screen, yeah, you get the control bar at the top, which is helpful and also annoying at times. But if you stay in full screen mode and you then shut down the guest, this is what you're left with. I assumed it would go back to the workstation interface, but not like this. The interface is full screen, so you have to close it or use the window control button to demaximize it. It's just an extra step that really got in the way, well, at least for me. Now, you could always create the VM in workstation and then use it in player, which for me just seems to work better for my type of use. When the guest is running, you can resize it on the fly, just like before, as well as go full screen, but it's in a much less bulky interface. Now VirtualBox. I'm not sold on the performance, but I do like the interface far more. It's similar to VMware Player, but just, I don't know, tidier. Within settings, you can configure your virtual machine just like in VMware, but when it's running, you have all these buttons or icons at the bottom of the window. These are great as they show the status of drives and it allows you to make changes just by right-clicking on them. Unfortunately, that's where the good stuff ends. VirtualBox, it's much buggier, and well, it's slower than VMware. That's not to say it's bad software, it's just not nearly as refined. But again, personally, I prefer the VirtualBox interface far more. All right, all right, so let's get into it. For the host machine, I'm using a simple Dell Optiplex with an i5-6500 CPU and 16 gigs of RAM. For video, we'll just use the built-in Intel graphics. And yes, that's not a high-end or even modern setup, but it's on purpose. Not everyone has a Threadripper with an RTX 4090. This is just an average desktop. Top. For the VMs, I have them set to use 4 cores and 8 gigs of RAM each. Each will be running separately, not at the same time. I didn't even have VMware or VirtualBox installed together at the same time. Also, normally I would assign less cores to the VM than what the host machine has. It gives it a bit of breathing room. But I'm maxing it out on these tests on purpose because it's the really only thing running on this PC and I'm going to compare the VM's results against the host. So, first up, Passmark. And yeah, overall VMware scored over a thousand points higher. In the memory test though, VirtualBox was the one that scored higher, although slightly. In 7-Zip, they performed about the same with VirtualBox surprisingly finishing 8 seconds sooner. With a single threaded run of Cinebench, VMware took the lead and finished about 8 minutes sooner. That's a pretty considerable gap. On real hardware, that type of gap might be created by let's say a, a 1 GHz difference in two CPUs onto the multi-threaded run. And VirtualBox did better, and the gap between them wasn't as large, obviously, but VMware finished about a minute 30 ahead of VirtualBox. With Handbrake, as usual, I used the default 1080 30 FPS setting with H.264 and no acceleration. So this is all CPU. And well, once again, <laughs> VMware finished first, uh, about five minutes sooner. VirtualBox encoded nearly 10 FPS slower. Now, another thing VirtualBox has issues with is video. Here I have a 1080 60fps video from YouTube playing on each with no hardware acceleration. VirtualBox couldn't even play the video smoothly and just drop frames left and right. The 17 drop frame shown in the VMware window, well, that's from when the video first starts. Once it got going, it played perfectly. And yes, the VMware tools and VirtualBox drivers were installed on each guest. Uh, okay, 3D on a virtual machine without GPU pass-through, well, yeah, it sucks. VMware did a decent job faking it, uh, but as you can hear, the audio is messed up. 
However, comparing that to VirtualBox, it's night and day. Well, since VirtualBox results are so bad, let's see how VMware does against the host. And as you can see here, VMware does a great job, all things considered. I did the same test with Sanctuary, but it wouldn't even load on VirtualBox, so I ran it up against the host. And VMware scored higher? Yeah, there's something wrong with the Sanctuary benchmark, where on the host hardware it wouldn't even go above 30 FPS, even with VSync off. I didn't put too much time uh, into troubleshooting it, but as you can see, it would have been pretty close anyways. So that raises the question, how did the VMs do compared to the bare host? Well, on Passmark CPU, VMware was less than a couple hundred points below the host. The memory test, well, as expected, the host scored higher. But as you can see here, the VMs weren't too far off from each other, you know, in comparison to the, the host score. With the Cinebench solo runs, VMware was about a minute and a half slower than the host, but VirtualBox took nearly 10 minutes longer to finish. In the multi-threaded run, VMware finished only 17 seconds slower than the host, while VirtualBox took a minute 46 longer. And Handbrake. Well, just like the other tests, VMware was only slightly slower than the host and averaged 3.8 FPS slower. VirtualBox averaged 13.4 FPS slower than the host. That's a pretty big difference. Now, each of these could have been tweaked to get a little bit better performance, and I did none of that. I just installed the software, created a VM, and installed the OS. Um, so looking at all the results, one might ask, why even bother using VirtualBox? Well, there's the interface. Uh, it's open source, and it has a large following, and with that large following comes support. And being open source, well, there's mods. However, if you're looking for something to use that you just want to work and have good performance, in my experience and shown here, VMware is the answer. So as always, if you're still here, thank you. And uh, I know that was pretty quick, but I just wanted to update the last video, and I'll see you guys next time. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.